In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord answer your prayer. Fulfill your request. And satisfy your thirsty soul. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for bringing us to another session. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you because you'll still do more. Thank you, Lord, because you'll fill your people to overflowing in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that you fulfill the desire of everyone. You fulfill your promise in every life. That your people will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, fill your people. Flow through your people. Walk through your people. And walk with your people all through our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, here we have John, John the Baptist, telling us about Jesus the Baptizer. And he tells us in Mark chapter 1 verse 8, I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. You'll find one word appearing there twice. The word baptize. Actually baptize originally was not an English word. It's the original baptizo. And they just changed the O to E to make it sound well in English. Baptizo, baptize. And the meaning is to deep inside liquid and to put Everything you are bringing inside that liquid, completely immersed in the liquid. And so as John baptized, he said, I indeed dip you, immerse you, and totally put you inside the water to demonstrate death and resurrection. And when we are baptized with water, that's what we demonstrate. We have been identified with Christ, crucified with Christ. We are dead with Christ. And to demonstrate that death, we are baptized in water, completely submerged, immersed, and deep into the water. When you baptize, you don't sprinkle water. Because when you bury, you don't sprinkle dust on the individual. You totally put the person in the grave. And so John said, I put you inside the water. I baptize you in water, actually. But he shall baptize you in the Holy Ghost. That means he will immerse you. He will put you inside and the Holy Ghost will be inside you, all around you, totally surrounding you. And that's what we're looking at tonight, the baptism and the benefits of the Holy Ghost. Three points we're going to consider. Number one, the promise of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The promise. Number two, the power and the benefits from the Holy Spirit. What benefits do we have? When we're immersed, when we're put inside the Holy Spirit, when it dwells in us, when it surrounds us, the power and the benefits from the Holy Spirit. Number three, our possibilities. This new year, possibilities in your life and boundlessness through the Holy Spirit the limit is taken away when the Holy Ghost comes in your life 
And the Holy Ghost can do any sin and every sin when He takes over your life and when He takes control. If you have been filled in the Holy Ghost before, by the Holy Ghost before, saturated by the Holy Ghost before, immersed in the Holy Ghost before, there is a new infilling tonight. Possibilities in your life, boundlessness in your life through the Holy Ghost. If you say amen, I will not close the meeting. Because tonight the Lord will revive you. It will energize you. It will envelope you. Baptize you and put you afresh inside the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Number one, the promise of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We're looking at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Some of these verses, it will appear that we're repeating them. Because Matthew records the verses. Mark records the verses. Luke records the verses. And other prophets and other writers repeat the verses. But they have different shades and meanings and interpretation. That's why we're looking at them. Matthew chapter 16. And we're looking at verse 16, chapter 3, rather, verse 16. Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. You see the language there? Jesus, when he was baptized, he came out of the water. That means he's been inside the water. And lo, the heavens opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove upon him and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Actually, John had just spoken about Christ in verse 11. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11 I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance that he is a seed that you repent a seed that you have turned you turn from sea you turn to the Lord and then I baptize you in mercy and water but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you that's a promise he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Isaiah chapter 44. In Isaiah chapter 44, looking at verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is. I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground your heart your soul your spirit your life your ministry will not be dry anymore yeah. how, how does it feel like how does it feel like when you have something you want to eat whatever it is rice or it's a bowl of you know something you want to swallow and there is no soup. And you say, yes, I'll manage. And then you try, you put it in your mouth, and you're eating. And there's no soup at all. Although you might try to put it in, it's so dry. How about it when you're preaching? And you're giving the bread of life, and the meal of life. And you're giving people something that will feed them. Number one, sometimes you're bringing it out of the cold out of the fridge and you're feeding people and the thing is not set on fire the fire of the holy ghost is not acting on that thing you're giving and the thing is so cold we're managing not only that there's no there's no uh, kind of function of the oil of the spirit there's so much friction there's so much conflict there's so much dryness because the oil of the Spirit is not there. That's the reason why if you're a minister 
and you want to be your best for the people you are ministry to, you'll not be serving them something cold that is not set on fire. You are not baptized, you are not immersed, and you are not filled with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And everything you are giving out is so cold. And the people see down there, you are cold, the word is cold, the utterance is cold, the preaching is cold, and the people are cold. And then when we are to pray, what are we going to pray about? Our prayer is cold. But when the fire of the Holy Ghost comes, and tonight is coming afresh, and then the words have been given us before that we just read that verse and read that verse and read that verse and everything is so dry but the fire comes in today and cooks everything up and then makes what we are saying to be palatable and to be acceptable that's why he said I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Can you see the two things going together there? The spirit and the blessing. The spirit and the wonder. The spirit and the oil. The spirit and the blessing is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. What Ezekiel is doing for us is uh, helping us to understand. You cannot just come from the jungle and then just get into this blessing we're talking about. You cannot just get out of sin and then jump into this we're talking about. It says the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is going to be poured upon you. But there's one, one step, there's two, second step, then there is three, the third step, and the Holy Ghost will empower you tremendously. Ezekiel chapter 36, it tells us number one, that's in verse 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. And ye shall be clean. You look up here sometimes, you know, if uh, you, know, you have some dirty plates to wash, and your little boy, your little girl says, Mom, I'm going to help you today. I'm going to wash you today. And then he wash, uh, that child washes it. Although you are very happy that your child is offering to wash the place. But when you look at the place that, you know, your child has washed, it's still as dirty as before. And the child is happy. Mommy, I help you today. Mommy, I did it today. And I'm going to be doing it every day. And you smile to encourage the child. And then as the child turns away, you take the place and what do you do? You wash again. There's a difference between you washing yourself and the almighty God himself saying, I will cleanse you. That's my work. You cannot do it well. You cannot do it and make it as clean as it ought to be. And he says, then when I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean. And from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. It's the work of the Lord, salvation. It's the work of the Lord, conversion. It's the work of the Lord, transformation. That's what you have there. But look at the next verse. A new heart also will I give you. A new heart also will I give you. It doesn't it much, doesn't it much. You know, in the new year, there's a new gift. In the new year, there's a new spirit. In the new year, there's a new heart. And the Lord is saying, this is the time. If there was any time this promise ought to be fulfilled, tonight is going to be fulfilled. A new heart also will I give you. Have you noticed that word also? Also. There are people that tell us, they say, you know, salvation gives you everything. When you are saved, at the same time you are sanctified, at the same time you are filled with the Holy Ghost. But to see what God said, God said, no, I don't do it like that. I could if I wanted to. Here is the way I do it because I'm a God of order. I'm a God that does things systematically. First of all, I will save you. First of all, I will forgive your sin. First of all, I will place you. And then number two, also, 
also subsequent to that salvation in your heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh give me a good amen, amen. i'm sure you must have heard before that there are times when a woman is carrying fibroid and the fibroid is growing and growing but she doesn't have a child yet and then she goes to the doctors and he says uh, she says i to have a child i want to carry my own baby and the doctor said you know what this fibroid is a problem and we need to operate the fibroid and take the fibroid away so we can make way for the miracle baby to come your miracle is coming but the Lord is saying, look at it. That thing that is hard when you touch it. That thing that is hard the way you feel. That thing that is hard whenever you are relating with people and they are trying to be soft and to be nice and to be loving and you are rigid. And you say, no, this is me. That's my mind. I like to tell my mind. I like to tell people the way I don't pretend. If I hate something, I tell you I hate something. That hard thing that is there, that's the spiritual fibroid and it's going to hinder fruitfulness. But thank God tonight, there's a wonderful operation. And the Lord will operate it away in Jesus' name. And he says, I will, I will take away. He will take it away. I said he will take it away. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. I will give you an heart of flesh. That's number two. Number one, the salvation. Number two, the sanctification. Number three, look at verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. Where will the spirit be? I say, where will the Holy Ghost be? Where will he be walking from tonight? inside you there praise the lord something you never knew before you are going to know tonight i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and uh, do them you see there are people that tell us that god knows what he has promised you don't need to pray you don't need to seek the lord He's a faithful God. He said you will do it. And so what's your problem? Are oh, you praying, 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 praying? But you know, it's like you're telling somebody who's a sinner. God says he will save. He's not willing that anybody should perish. And since God says he will save, how about this repent, repent, repent? Why? How about pray, pray, pray? Why? Because God said, although he has promised us, we still have to ask him to show that we want the promise fulfilled. And thank God somebody there tonight, you want the promise fulfilled. And the Lord is going to do it in Jesus' name. Hey, look at what I'm saying. Huh? Verse 36. Verse 36 of that same chapter. Then the heathen that are left around about you shall know that I, the Lord, build the ruined places. He'll build your life from tonight. And plant that that was desolate. It will plant you afresh. I, the Lord, have spoken it. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will do it. As I look at you, I see the blessing of God. I see the performance of the Lord. And I see the glory of the Lord. What he said he will do, I will do it. Who is the candidate tonight? Praise the Lord, it's happening. But look at verse 37. Look at verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Those who say we don't have to pray, we don't have to cry before the Lord, and we don't have to seek the face of the Lord, a promised salvation he will save at his own time. A promised sanctification he'll do it at his own time. A promised baptism immersion in the Holy Ghost he'll do it at his own time. God said yes. 
I've spoken it myself and I will do it but you need to understand that I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. He'll do it for you. I said he'll do it for you. Look at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Here we're reading from verse 21. Joel chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 21. In Joel chapter 2 verse 21. Look at the series of promises the Lord is giving you tonight. Okay, I should say he's giving me tonight. It will be yours. Verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. As you move around the camp, remind yourself, this Congress, before I leave, the Lord will do great things. All those prayers I've been praying, I believe and I know the Lord will do great things. He will in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 25, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Everything you have lost because maybe personal, you, you didn't think through. And because you didn't think through, you lost some things in your life. Thank God, it's a year of restoration. Or maybe because other people carelessly handled your matter. And because of that carelessness from other people, you lost some things. Praise the Lord, restoration time has come. Or it is just that the church did not wake up very quickly. And the things we needed, you know, the church did not think of that. They were just going this, uh, one single direction. And now we come to the new year. And the Lord is saying, I will restore to you the year that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Malnutrition will vanish away. Spiritual malnutrition will vanish away. In the physical, all that will also vanish away. Employment for the jobless in Jesus' name. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Where they asked you before, where is your God? You are going back there. Before you talk, they will see a testimony. On your face, they'll see testimony. In the carriage, the way you carry yourself, they'll see testimony. They will say, you have something to tell me, open your mouth and tell me. And when you begin to talk, miracle testimony will come out in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else. Once again, my people shall never be ashamed. Now verse 28. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. In your life, it shall come to pass. In your ministry, it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also, and also, and also upon my servants and upon my handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. He will do it. It has come to your turn. I said they will do it. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 1. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, somebody help me shout suddenly. suddenly. Unexpectedly, suddenly, it will come. While you're standing praying, it will come. While you're sitting praying, it will come. 
while you are praying and you are just walking away, suddenly something will happen there. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and they appeared unto them clothing tongues like, like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were and they were and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues and the Spirit gave them utterance Maybe that was for them because there are people that tell us that yes the Holy Ghost came we believe that and he manifested himself we believe that the wind and the fire came we believe that then they say but you know it was a privilege of those early people the early apostles of the Lord well let's look at verse 39 verse 39 it says for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off what does that mean because you see this was taking place in jerusalem that's in israel and when it says to you he was talking to the people standing before him and then to your children he was talking to their descendants and now to all that are far off what does that mean all that are far off all the places that are far away from jerusalem nigeria and Ghana, Togo, Benin, all the southern African countries, the whole of Africa, the whole of America, the people that are far away, Australia far away from Israel, to the people that are far away, and to the people right here, you are far away from Jerusalem, the promise is unto you. And it's unto your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Thank God he called me. I said, thank God he called me. I said, thank God he called me. He called me to salvation. I answered the call. He called me to sanctification. I answered the call. And now he's calling me to the baptism and the immersion and the power and the feeling and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. When he called me to salvation and I said, yes, I accepted. It happened. When he called me to sanctification and I said, yes, I accept, it happened. As he calls me now to be filled and baptized and immersed in the Holy Ghost, I say, yes, Lord, I'm ready. It will happen. Yeah. Point number two now, the power and the benefits from the Holy Ghost. The power and the benefits from the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost comes, you know, it's not just shaking us. You know there are people, it's alright, it's alright to shake if you want to shake. But you know, there are people, the only thing they have, when they say they've got the Holy Ghost, say that they shake. They shake the body, they shake, uh, they shake uh, the head, and they shake, shake, shake. But you are going to have something more than shaking tonight. Because when the Holy Ghost comes, it comes with power. Somebody shout power. Look at Micah chapter 3. Micah chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 8. Micah chapter 3. Reading from verse 8. Truly. But truly. Let somebody help me shout. Truly. I am full of power. By the spirit of the Lord. And of judgment. And of might. To declare unto Jacob. His transgression. And to Israel, he seen. I'm sure you've heard that before. Haven't you heard that before? But you know what Micah is saying? Micah was saying, you see, there is no vacuum in the world. Anywhere there is emptiness, anywhere there is vacuum, something will rush there and feel that thing. And if your heart is empty, something will come and feel it. And you're living in a world where there's Satan, where there are evil spirits, where there are wicked people, where there are terrorizing people. And when you see them, if uh, you don't have something filling your heart, something will come in there. Fear will come in there. Intimidation will come in there. Discouragement will come in there. But when you take that empty heart to the Lord, understand. A bucket may be clean but empty. 
a glass may be clean but empty even a whole house may be clean yet empty that were saved that were sanctified all that me all that that means says that were clean were pure were being purged but something clean can still be empty but you bring that empty vessel before the Lord tonight and it will fill you to overflowing and now Micah said, truly, I am full of power. And when the power came, it drove away every other thing that was there before. And by the grace of God, as the power of the Holy Ghost comes to you tonight, you'll be filled up in Jesus' name. Fear will go. Intimidation will go. Discouragement will go. Negative talk, I cannot. I am weak. I know my level. I know who I am. It's not who you are from tonight. It's who the Holy Ghost is in you that we're going to look at tonight in Jesus' name. And then you'll be able to say, truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord, that power will fill you tonight. I say that power will fill you tonight. And then you will turn many unto the Lord in Jesus' name. How will that happen? Look at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. In verse 4. And being assembled together with them, they commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait, but wait, if you wait, you are going to receive. You know sometimes, all it takes is that we wait. You are tired, but wait. You see, can you go to go and pick something there, but wait. Let me remind you, all those 120 believers in the upper room, you know what they did? They waited. They were not all of the same ability, but they waited. They were not all of the same excitement and faith, but they waited. And because they were all there, waiting, waiting for the Spirit. And as you are waiting, your own portion will come to you. I said your own portion will come to you. Just wait, just wait. I don't see I have this, don't worry, just wait. I don't see it come up to this. Don't worry. Just wait. While you are waiting with the rest of the people of God, don't you understand? God is giving this one by your side. He's giving that one by your side. He will not pass you by. He said they should wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, which says he, ye have heard of me. For John truly really baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized for the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Verse 8. But he shall receive power. What are you receiving tonight? He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost says, Come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Power, power to preach, power, power to pray, power to heal, power to deliver, power to set free, power to live righteously, power to walk and not be tired, power in your life in Jesus' name. And all the other benefits of the Holy Ghost coming upon us. We've learned about his attributes. We've learned about his works and about his wonders. His works and his wonders will be demonstrated in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three, our possibilities and boundlessness through the Holy Spirit. Great possibilities. I say great possibilities. Boundlessness. There's no limit when the Holy Ghost comes into your life. You cannot say, I cannot do that. I cannot go there. When the Holy Ghost comes, 
you'll be able to do all things your days for you to do. Testimonies upon testimonies in Jesus' name. John chapter 14, verse 12. John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, who is he talking to? I said, who is he talking to? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Because I go unto my Father. You see what he said? He said, those who believe on him, the works he's doing, he was doing, they will do. Not because they have read the Bible from cover to cover. Not because they are so knowledgeable. But because I go to the Father. And when I get to the Father, I ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to them. And they will receive the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. I go to the Father, and when I get to the Father, I'll pray for you, I'll plead for you, I'll tell the Father to send the Holy Spirit to you, and he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Those are the benefits, and those are the possibilities that if you normally forget things, you know, you're searching for things every day. I don't know where I put that thing and that thing I heard that encouraged me, I'm trying to recollect, I cannot recollect. And at the time when I need to make use of that thing so as to be victorious, I can't remember anymore, the Holy Ghost will teach you. The Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance everything he has told you in Jesus' name. Uh, look at Romans chapter 8 verse 11. What the Holy Ghost does, the possibilities in your life. When the Holy Ghost comes in, as he's coming in tonight, as he's taking residence in your life tonight, as he's going to abide with you, abide in you from tonight. I was waiting for amen. Yeah. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But keep the spirit of him that traced up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. By his spirit that dwelleth in you, as he comes to live in you, it will sweep every part of your body clean. Sickness, go out. Oppression, go out. And any part of your body, internal organs that are not functioning anymore, life will come in. It will quicken every part of you in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 18. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. What kind of image? The image of the Lord. We're looking at the statue of the Lord. We're looking at the glory of the Lord. And then the Holy Ghost comes and we're changed into the same image from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. That's what he does. That's what he does. And it's going to affect it in your life. Romans chapter 15. In Romans chapter 15, reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 15, we're reading from verse 18. It says in verse 18, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God. Mighty signs and wonders. Are you a walker? I said, are you a walker? Are you a leader? Are you a preacher? 
The Lord is saying, by the mighty power of the Spirit of God, there will be mighty signs and wonders in your life in Jesus' name. And through that power, you will turn many to know the Lord. You will turn many to seek the Lord in Jesus' name. You must have faith. And why wouldn't you have faith? God cannot change. Why wouldn't you have faith? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why wouldn't you have faith? The Holy Ghost is so eager to come into you. He wants to abide in you. In Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, why haven't you received? Because of your unbelief. Why are you still weak? Because of your unbelief. Why do you think your prayer has not been answered? Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And it shall remove. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall be impossible unto you. And I want you to think now. What happens if you just knew that nothing shall be impossible for you? There's somebody to be prayed for. And you know, nothing shall be impossible for you. There's somebody you need to witness to. And you know that you know that you know. Nothing shall be impossible for you. And you have to remove a particular problem, a particular mountain. And you know, nothing shall be impossible unto you. The Holy Ghost will make it possible. Power from on high will make it possible. And then you'll not be retarded anymore and thinking, you know, what if I say it and nothing happens? You will know that you are going to say it and something good will happen in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 23. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe tonight, if you can believe tonight, if you can believe all things are possible to him, possible to her that believeth. All things are possible. I said all things are possible. I said all things are possible. That's why tonight you're trusting the Lord that as we're going to pray, whose prayer is God going to answer tonight? I said whose prayer is God going to answer tonight? God is going to answer your prayer. Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. I came to pass when the Lord will take Elijah into heaven by one wind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. That's a thirsty man. That's a hungry man. That's a desirous man. He knew he was dry. He knew he needed the power of the Holy Ghost. And he had not got it. He had been looking at Elijah. And he had been seeing the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And he wanted something. Like you want something tonight. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that what Bethel came for to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? He said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. You know, somebody wants the power of the Holy Ghost will not be talk at you. Somebody wants the power of the Holy Ghost will not, after the meeting, talk to this and talk to this and talk to this. It's expecting. Even if you have, when you have received, you want more outpouring, more outpouring, you'll not be talkative in Jesus' name. 
verse 4. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets, they're always there. They want to talk. They're always there. They want to disturb. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry here. Tarry here, nobody will discourage you. You know, some people said, you know, I would have tarried, I would have waited, I would have got the power, I would have got the Holy Ghost, but you know, something happened. Somebody looked at me like this, I didn't like that. Somebody did this to me and ate me like this, I didn't like that, and I was thinking about that. Let go and let God. I said, let go and let God. You see, if you let go all those small, small things, then you'll be able to receive all that God has for you. You will receive in Jesus' name. And I just said in verse 6 unto him, Tarry here, I pray thee. And then he says, For the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And it shall went on. And the fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither. And so they too went over on dry ground. And now the moment came. Your moment has come. The opportunity came. Your opportunity has come. Elisha knew that this moment will come. You know in your heart there, this moment is coming for you. And it came to pass when they were gone over. That Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me, when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, there is no not in your dictionary tonight. But if not, there's no language of not in your mouth tonight. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, and it still went on and taught that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by one wind into heaven. And Elijah saw it. You will see. And Elisha saw it. You know, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Your concentration. The Holy Ghost is coming. And the Lord will pitch in your heart. I have come. I have come. And when you wake up, I receive. You get in Jesus' name. And Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes, the old cloth of weakness, take that, throw it away. And he rent them in two pieces, and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah. Elijah is gone, that mantle belonged to him now. I said that mantle belonged to him now. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and he smoothed the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, he also had smitten the waters, he also, he did what Elijah did, you'll do what Jesus has done. 
departed hither and thither. And Elisha went over. And Elisha went over. And Elisha went over. He went over to the realm of miracles. He went over to the realm of power. He went over to the realm of anointing. He went over to the realm of revelation. And when the sons of the prophets that were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elisha. The spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elisha. The spirit of Elijah does rest upon Elisha. Look at Elisha before me sitting down there. Look at Elisha before us sitting down there. The spirit of Elijah. That same spirit and that same power coming upon that Elisha tonight. Coming upon that daughter of God tonight. Coming upon that son of God tonight. You are saved. Go on and pray. You are sanctified. Go on and pray. Now you are to be filled with the Holy Ghost. It shall baptize you. It shall baptize you. He shall baptize you. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He has done it before. He's going to do it again. He will fill you and fill you and fill you and fill you and refill you. Because tonight is your power night. Tonight is the night of your possibilities.